When supervillains start taking people's lives, the heroes are forced to do the same and end up generating a gigantic civil war. Today we're going to recap the story of the series, Jupiter's Legacy, from 2021. Outside a bank, a group of criminals wearing monkey masks exchanged fire with some police officers and attached a bomb to the door of the armored car. Just as they are about to detonate the explosives, a woman arrives as if everything is normal and puts on a suit of nano armor, firing bursts of energy that knock out the criminals. With everyone knocked out, the woman destroys the armored car door and prepares to take the gold when Brandon arrives, the son of the Utopian, the greatest hero on the planet. As soon as he sees her, Paragon orders her to lie down on the ground and tries to arrest her, but the villain resists and fires a blast of energy that throws the young man into a building. Wanting to ridicule him, the girl goes after Brandon and tells him that he doesn't measure up to her parents, preparing one last shot. Before she can shoot, Utopian arrives and manages to stop the woman with just one hand, crushing her armor and throwing her against the ceiling. With the villain out of the way, Utopian scolds his son for not asking for backup, telling him to do better next time. Later, Sheldon talks to his wife Grace about Brandon's failure, without suspecting that he is on the roof listening to everything with his super hearing. Suddenly, Walter appears and starts talking to his nephew, telling him a bit more about when they were younger. In 1929, the young Sheldon and Walter plan to open new mills with their father Chester. After they make all the investments, the crisis of 29 begins and all the shares start to fall, including that of the plant. Desperate, Sheldon runs to headquarters in search of his father and finds him on the terrace. Concerned, the young man calls him inside and Chester replies that he'll be right down, but instead of going in, the man throws himself off the building. In the present, Sheldon and Walter are talking about how the world is changing when Fitz shows up to warn them that one of the biggest supervillains has escaped from prison, the Black Star. In an isolated forest, Utopian is thrown away and Lady Liberty tries to defend her husband, but is easily knocked out. Sheldon tries to fight back with a few punches and his heat vision, but the supervillain takes no damage and manages to throw him away. Just then, Brandon and the other heroes arrive to help and Walter uses his telepathy to paralyze the villain, allowing the other heroes to attack. Even so, Black Star manages to recover and fires an antimatter cannon that eliminates three superheroes in one go. After losing part of the team, Utopian and Lady Liberty hold the villain so that Walter can separate his mind from his body, but Black Star still manages to react and prepares an antimatter explosion. With the villain about to eliminate his parents, Brandon goes after him and smashes his skull with one punch, taking the villain's life. Furious, Sheldon starts fighting with his son and orders him to go home, forbidding him to take action until further notice. After the fight, Walter uses telepathy to talk to the head of the prison and discovers that Black Star is still in prison, meaning that they fought a clone. After the clone's elimination, Grace holds a press conference and apologizes for what her son did, but the journalists say that 78% of the American population approves of the fact that Brandon took the villain's life. Upon hearing this, Utopian goes to the microphone and says that taking the life of a villain is against the code of the Union, which causes him to be booed by the crowd. At home, Sheldon goes to talk to Brandon and tells him that everything he does reflects on the family, repeating that he must do better. Brandon then replies that he had to choose between the Black Star's life and Sheldon's, and that he would choose to save his father again without thinking twice. In response, Utopian says that there is always another way of doing things and that taking a life is never the solution, forcing his son to do chores on the farm as punishment. Back in 1929, the Sampson brothers begin to discuss the future of the company when they are interrupted by young Fitz and his father Willie, who show them a newspaper which says that Chester took his own life after stealing the employees' pensions. Furious, Sheldon goes to the newspaper's headquarters and asks to speak to whoever wrote the article. Grace then introduces herself and asks what the problem is, saying that everything written there has been checked. Furious, Sheldon begins to insult the journalists and says that they are profiteers, leaving with even more anger than when he entered. When he returns to the company's headquarters, Walter tells him that everything in the story is true and that his father really did use the pension fund to expand the company. With no options left, Walter says they will have to shut down production and Sheldon is forced to lay off the staff. Unemployed and without their pensions, the men are furious and try to attack Sheldon, but Fitz and Willie manage to calm the crowd down, saying that it's better to be jobless than imprisoned. After dismissing everyone, the future superhero goes to his father's funeral and begins to give a farewell speech. Then, suddenly, he starts to get dizzy and loses consciousness. At the hospital, Sheldon begins to struggle as he has a vision of a mysterious island and a windmill missing three blades. Suddenly the vision ends and Sheldon regains consciousness, telling Walter everything he saw without realizing that a zombie version of his father is right behind him. At home, 
George is having breakfast when Walter shows up to talk about Sheldon, telling him that he has a psychological problem and needs his best friend's help. Wanting to help, George goes to visit him and hears him shouting at someone behind the door. After a while, Sheldon shows up all wound up and asks George to come in. Worried, he asks who he was yelling at and Sheldon replies that he was just thinking out loud, hiding the fact that his father's spirit is tormenting him. After a bit of chatting, Sheldon says he has to get back to what he was doing and tears up some drawings on the table, starting another one straight away. Finding it strange, George says he didn't know he drew and calls him for a walk, but Chester's spirit returns to torment him and Sheldon has another crisis, knocking over his chair in a rage. Even though he's scared, George comforts his friend and talks him to sleep. After Sheldon blacks out, the man picks up the shredded drawings and takes them all to try to put the pieces back together. When he finally succeeds, the businessman returns to Sheldon and shows him the completed drawing, giving his friend a new vision. This time with a farm in the firing of a revolver. While George calls the ambulance, Sheldon takes the drawing of the windmill and runs away without anyone noticing. In the midst of the crisis of 29, Sheldon wanders alone along the country roads until he reaches a town in rural Kansas. There, Sheldon starts looking for a phone when he sees some hungry people stealing bread from a merchant. When he tries to help, the businessman ends up taking a beating and falls to the ground, only recovering when a little girl approaches him to take his drawing. Finding it strange, the girl asks if he's not from there and wonders why the stranger has a drawing of the Miller Mill. Curious, Sheldon asks her if she knows where the place is and follows the direction she points, ending up on an isolated farm. On the spot, he recognizes everything from his vision and decides to approach to knock on the door. As no one answers, the future superhero enters anyway and begins to explore the house, until he is surprised by the owner who points a revolver at him. Angrily, the man asks why Sheldon broke into his house and he replies that he saw the place inside his head. Frightened, the man asks if he's had a vision and says that it happens to him too. Mr. Miller then takes a bottle of drink and pours it for the visitor, recommending that he drink it and then go home. Obviously Sheldon refuses and the old man begins to rave, which causes Chester's spirit to appear and tell him that he shouldn't talk to crazy people. Seeing his face, Miller automatically understands what's going on and asks if the person talking to him is someone close to him. The old man then says that it's always a close relative and that Sheldon shouldn't listen to lying spirits, then shoots himself in the head. While trying to figure out what happened, Sheldon sees the blood on the floor and realizes that it is dripping into a trap door. Without thinking twice, he pushes the man aside and makes his way to the basement, where he finds the rest of the Muller family already lifeless. Just below, Sheldon sees several markings on the wall and has a third vision, this time with his father's watch and some coordinates written on the table. Looking around, the businessman sees that the Miller family has disappeared and some other people are sitting there, like Fitz, George, Walter and Grace, as well as some strangers. After the vision, Sheldon meets Walter and returns home where he continues to be tormented by the visions and by his father. Determined to end it all once and for all, he goes to Chester's coffin and takes back his watch. With that done, Sheldon goes to George and shows him the coordinates he's found, saying that it leads to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The man also tells him about the vision around the table and that George was also there, saying that it must all be part of an enigma that will change the world. Finally, Sheldon asks for help and George decides to support his friend, beginning the mission to recruit the rest of the team. In the present, the superheroes gather at the Union to perform an autopsy on the Black Star clone. After taking off the armor, they begin to remove his organs and Fitz finds a strange sphere next to his liver. Without understanding what it is, they start to clean and open the sphere, discovering Chester's watch inside. At home, Sheldon starts looking for the watch and discovers that the one he had saved is still there, revealing that the object has been duplicated. Observing everything, Walter says that only George could do something like that, indicating that his enemy is an old ally. In the past, Sheldon and George go to the newspaper where they meet Grace who has just been fired. While the woman puts her things away, Sheldon apologizes for what he said last time and offers her a job, saying he's going on an expedition and wants her to record everything. After Grace accepts, the pair go to Fitz's house and tell him about the expedition they're planning, promising to pay the equivalent of six months' salary at the plant and divide what they find equally between everyone. Even though the offer is good, Fitz refuses and kicks out the pair, who begin to think about what to do to get him to accept. Inside, Willie talks to his son and tells him that he has just turned down a unique offer, saying that Sheldon had nothing to do with Chester's theft of the pension. This makes Fitz change his mind and go to the car to say he accepts the offer. Soon after, Sheldon goes to Walter who complains that he didn't attend the board meeting, saying that he lost the vote and now the company will be sold. Sheldon then says that none of this matters and mentions the coordinates he found, 
But Walter replies that the company was important to him and refuses to continue listening. As this doesn't work out, George decides to visit Walter and convinces him to go, saying that Sheldon needs this journey to heal. Now that Walter is convinced, the group goes after a captain and manages to convince him to take care of the transportation, but the area they are going to is known for having many shipwrecks and most of the crew refuses to leave. In the present, a group of younger superheroes are fighting some villains who have just taken the lives of their comrades. Furious, Jay, a young man with lava powers, manages to defeat his enemies, but he's still not satisfied and tries to take the villain's life, only to be stopped by Lady Liberty, who appears at the last second. Still out of control, Jay says that the villains are eliminating the heroes and that they have no right to fight back, stating that it's past time for the Union to change the code. Even with the young man's level of rage, Grace manages to calm him down and takes the villain to prison. On the boat, Fitz hears Sheldon arguing alone in the cabin and calls Grace to listen behind the door. Worried, the two go to talk to Walter who refuses to give any more information, saying only that he is fine. While the trio are arguing, the ship's bilge pump stops and Fitz goes to the captain to offer to help. In the engine room, the young man arrives to offer support and finds two sailors trying to use brute force to fix it. Having read many books on the subject, Fitz says that there must be debris obstructing the passage and suggests using fluids to clean it out. That's enough to get the ship running again. While sailing, they end up being hit by a huge storm and the captain orders them to turn around, which makes Sheldon freak out in front of everyone. Because of this, the captain orders them to take him to the cabin and keep watch, but the former businessman manages to steal the gun of one of the sailors and uses it to force the helmsman to continue forward. Hearing the screams, the captain arrives on deck and points his gun at Sheldon, saying he'll shoot him if he doesn't put it down. Meanwhile, Chester keeps telling his son that everyone wants to stop him from achieving his goal, but Sheldon remembers what Mr. Miller said about the voices lying and puts the gun down. At that moment, the storm disappears and a loud sound magically appears, only to disappear after Chester's watch breaks. As soon as this happens, the island of Sheldon's vision appears on the horizon and amazes everyone. In the present day, Lady Liberty arrives to attend to an incident and finds one of the Union's heroines with a very serious wound to her stomach. As she nears the end, the girl repeats that she didn't break the code and that she didn't eliminate the villain, which sends Grace into a state of rage. Because of this, the woman is much more aggressive than usual and ignores all the damage caused by the villain, knocking him out and continuing the punching session even after he is already defeated. Despite this, Lady Liberty leaves the villain alive and goes to the Union headquarters, where everyone is gathered around the clone. After a bit of discussion, the team decides to enter the copy's mind to see what they can find out, with Fitz reactivating the neurons so that Walter can access his memory. Afraid of something going wrong, Grace suggests asking Heiko, Walter's daughter, for help. In Tokyo, the girl is given the mission of eliminating a target and starts fighting her bodyguards, cutting them all down with her machete. After the henchmen are out of combat, Heiko is preparing to finish the mission when Walter enters her mind, leaving the girl paralyzed in the real world while they talk. He then says he needs help and Heiko agrees to collaborate for a million, driving Walter out of the girl's mind who finishes off the last two henchmen and the target soon after. On the boat, Sheldon and the others get into a dinghy and set off towards the island, landing on the nearest beach. Not knowing where to go, the group begins a journey towards the center, passing through several different biomes until they reach a desert. Suddenly, everyone is hit by a strong sandstorm and has to fight to stay together, moving on anyway. With great difficulty, they manage to get through the storm and arrive at a gorge, walking along a narrow piece of rock until they reach a stone labyrinth. After more than a day searching for the exit, the group arrives in an open area full of Viking Arab bodies. While the others look at the piles of bones, new walls emerge from the ground and block all paths. Trying to understand what has happened, Sheldon and George touch the wall at the same time, which causes some luminous signs to appear on the rock. Thinking that this is the answer, Sheldon calls the others who also touch the rock, causing even more illuminated symbols to appear. Once all the designs are formed, the rock turns into a door that magically opens, giving them access to the center of the island, where they find a bright lotus flower. As they approach the petals, each of the group meets their loved ones who congratulate them on getting through all the challenges, saying that they are now worthy. Suddenly, a whirlwind of energy begins to approach and a great shockwave spreads across the island, granting powers to the original members of the Union. In the present, Heiko arrives at the Union and they begin to execute the plan, with Fitz reviving the neurons so that Walter can access the memories. While wandering through the clone's brain, he ends up getting caught in a trap and Heiko has to keep the mental door open so that her father doesn't get trapped. As if that wasn't bad enough, Black Star's cell opens and the entire prison staff goes on alert. 
calling Brandon and Utopian to look for him. Inside the clone's brain, Walter meets George who starts attacking him. Despite being quite strong, Walter has never been an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat and is at a disadvantage, which puts all his vital signs at their peak. Realizing this, Grace asks to be put inside and starts attacking George, who strikes back by paralyzing her with a gun. In prison, Brandon is found by the real Black Star and tries to defeat him alone, but ends up being taken prisoner. With the young man in his arms, the villain leaves his throat exposed and asks if Utopian isn't going to eliminate him, saying that Brandon didn't think twice before taking a life to save him and his wife. Black Star then asks if the code is more important than family and Utopian begins to charge his heat vision, but Fitz's daughter arrives and saves Brandon before anything worse happens. Even at three against one, the superheroes are outnumbered and Utopian is almost defeated, but Brandon shows up to save him, landing several blows to the villain's head. Just as he is about to deliver the final blow, the young man decides to do things differently this time and stops before crushing its skull, leaving the black star unlit on the ground. Inside the clone's mind, George remembers that the Union only exists because of him and says that he was still expelled. Finally, the villain says he's going to show Walter how it all ends and starts transmitting images into his head. Luckily, the neurons are deactivated at that very moment and both Walter and Grace return to their bodies. Now that everyone is safe, the woman asks to see the message George sent and Walter shows her a vision of Utopian and Brandon eliminated in the future. Finally, the telepath says that George has cloned Blackstar and placed a trap inside his brain, which motivates the entire Union to arrest him. Now that things are calmer, Walter goes to thank Heiko for her help, but the girl tells him that she can see his mind and that she already knows that he was the one who cloned the Black Star, all to put the blame on George. In addition, Walter opened up the cell of the real villain and did everything he could to make Brandon and Sheldon fight, creating instability and making the Union need a new leader. Walter then says that all the country's problems are Sheldon's fault and Heiko says she doesn't care about the United States, asking for 50 million to keep everything secret. Instead, Walter says that he expected Heiko to stand by him and says that she is a disappointment, taking his own daughter's life with a knife. So what did you think of this series? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more series recaps. See you next time.